Thank you, Jeremy. Uh, so I already addressed uh, the uh, administrative matters before, so I will just introduce uh, the first uh, plenary speaker. So I'm very happy uh, today to in introduce uh, Raymond Panton from the University of Sherbrooke. Raymond has been a professor at the Faculty of Engineering at the University of Sherbrooke since early 1998. Uh, that same year, he co-founded Mechanom Inc., a spin-off company that develops, manufactures, and markets on a worldwide scale, specialized taste, and measurement products for acoustic material and predictive software for vibroacoustics. As a researcher, Professor Panton is affiliated with the acoustic group of the University of Sherbrooke, which is called the GOES. The GOES is the largest research center in acoustics in Canada, and it provides an excellent uh, learning and uh, research environment for scientists and graduate students. The research program of Professor Panton focuses on the multi-scale modeling characterization and optimization of acoustic porous materials. Recently, he set up a research team on ecological and structured acoustical materials to promote the use of recycled and recyclable materials in the context of sustainable development. So uh, I invite uh, Raymond to come to this uh, stage and he will present uh, the title of this uh, conference of his speech would be conventional and non-conventional porous material for noise control, overcoming conventional limits. like that. Okay, so uh, thank you, uh, Frank, thank you, uh, Jeremy, for the organization of this meeting and, and also for inviting me to this uh, conference to give the first lecture, so lots of pressure. One year to prepare the presentation, the last three days to make it. So uh, I hope it will be uh, interesting for you. So. Uh, it's, uh, it's not an overview of what I've done in my career. It's uh, some, something that I would like to present, uh, some uh, kind of overview of what is noise, uh, mater acoustic materials okay, at different scales and uh, some uh, applications that can uh, derive from this type of uh, uh, understandings at the different scales. So my presentation uh, is conventional and non-conventional. And you will see what is conventional materials. It's all the materials that we currently use for the last uh, decades and uh, centuries. And unconventional is to uh, rework okay, this type of uh, mat conventional materials okay, to go much uh, back in the history okay, where we use natural materials, mineral materials to, uh, uh, for our comfort, notably on acoustic, uh, for acoustic purposes. Okay, so I'll give an overview of what is non-conventional for me, okay, uh, in terms of this type of material for noise control, of course. And uh, also I would like to present some uh, limitation of materials, okay. Uh, when we talk about acoustic materials, we talk about sound absorption, sound transmission, and all of, this, of these two properties depends on the microstructures of the material. So I will give what are the limits, the physical limits of sound absorption, transmission, in terms of the microstructures and the properties of the materials. So the presentation plan, plan is an uh, introduction, okay, where I will present the uh, University of Sherbrooke and uh, uh, GOES, the, the acoustic groups uh, of uh, Sherbrooke, uh, and uh, the team of uh, eco -material, eco ecological material and myself. Uh, and then some forward uh, on uh, the, the, the presentation, and I'll call that from Planck scale to cosmic scale, from renewable to re uh, non-renewable 
uh, materials, okay? And uh, then I will talk about conventional porous materials and non-conventional porous materials that are used in acoustics, of course, for sound absorption purposes and sound transmission purposes. And finally, well, conclusion here. There is no conclusion <laughs> because I won't have time for conclusions. <laughs> so let's start with, with what is the University of Sherbrooke? University of Sherbrooke, okay, it's uh, not far from Sh uh, Montreal. So uh, uh, it has been mentioned that the next uh, Canadian meeting in acoustic will be uh, uh, old in Sherbrooke, so it's just uh, uh, 150 kilometer from uh, West, uh, West Montreal, uh, East Montreal. It's, uh, you see here the two main campuses in, uh, of Sherbrooke, the uh, health uh, and um, campus and the, 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 the general campus where we have the faculty of engineering. So uh, it includes eight faculties. Uh, we have a co-op engineering program where the students have to make four, uh, five work terms of four months. Uh, we have the three engineering grades, uh, 34 research center, including GOES, the acoustic groups of the University of Sherbrooke. Uh, there, there are 79 research chairs, including one that is, that is held by GOES uh, professors, and uh, three previous ones uh, that was uh, hold, uh, hold by uh, GOES professor also. Uh, you see that the, the university is quite, uh, it's not a very large university that uh, does in Montreal, but it, 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 anyway, it's 40,000 40, students uh, uh, at the different levels and uh, 7,000 uh, staff members, including uh, 500, about 500 at the Faculty of Engineering. So in this Faculty of Engineering, in the Mechanical Engineering Department, we have the Acoustic and Vibration uh, Group of the University of Sherbrooke. It's, uh, it was founded in 1984 by Jean, Professor Jean Nicolas. And uh, it's uh, recognized, as uh, Frank mentioned, as uh, one of the largest center of, uh, in, in research center in acoustics and vibration in Canada. In terms of number of professors that are affiliated to the, the, this research group, seven professors, six research associates, uh, two technicians, and uh, uh, something like 50 students at different grades, okay? Uh, we have six research teams, vibroacoustic, materials, active control, ultrasound, imaging, sound synthesis, and quality. Largest academic research centers I mentioned in uh, Canada. Uh, more than 500 scientific technical publications. Uh, and uh, we have three closed and one active research chairs, as I mentioned uh, previously. And we have national and international collaborations and partnerships, and I know that I have uh, some partners from uh, Germany, from China, from uh, France that are here today, so welcome to everybody, okay? And also to the rest, of course, okay? Maybe we will collaborate in the future, when I, who knows? And here we have, uh, GOES is also large in terms of infrastructures. Uh, we have a multi-million dollar research infrastructure and uh, software access to Compute Canada, which is a large uh, group for uh, uh, parallel computing, supercomputer, and we have uh, lots of facilities like an equipped chamber, uh, two an equipped chambers, reverberant room, sound synthesis uh, uh, room, and uh, everything that is useful for making uh, noise and acoustic uh, measurements, of course, okay? And some mock-up of uh, aircraft uh, and cabin uh, for aircraft, uh, this is uh, one of the major um, uh, 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 industries in Quebec, is the aerospace industry, so lots of uh, aeroacoustic uh, research in uh, noise and, and vibration are uh, related to, uh, uh, not only to, but uh, um, uh, a lot of uh, our research are in uh, uh, aerospace. And IMA is uh, the Structural Acoustical and Ecological Material Team, okay, uh, where we want to study design acoustic materials according to ecological uh, eco-efficiency approach, uh, uh, sustainable development, uh, valorize recycle, uh, recycle uh, recyclable uh, material, vegetables, minerals, and natural uh, materials. Okay, uh, you have some pictures that give some screenshot of the, 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 the type of material we are working on. Uh, we also uh, model and characterize the co-acoustic material used in noise and vibration control. So we have 
developed uh, the research tools and uh, to model the acoustics of these materials. They are non-conventional materials, but this is the same. We just do what we, uh, with the natural and non-conventional materials, what we have done with conventional materials in terms of their modeling. Okay, and uh, we also go beyond traditional acoustic uh, materials, what we call man-structured materials. Some call that uh, metamaterials. Okay, so I will give a big uh, description, my own description later on on this. And we have access to a lot of uh, facilities for the characterization from micro scales, okay, to the macroscopic acoustic properties, okay, like sound absorption, sound transmission. In normal incidents, we're using impedance tube or in, uh, ch in uh, transmission loss uh, chambers, reverberant chambers, and so on. And myself, okay, it's from microstructure to macroscopic acoustic behavior. It's about characterization, modeling, optimization, and design. Okay, here's a big picture of all this. So what we want to do here is to have this uh, uh, screenshot of what is the micro scale, okay? The microstructure of the materials. I will present the three great categories of materials for acoustic uh, purposes. So we use this uh, microstructure, we characterize this microstructure, we find models, microstructural models uh, to character, uh, to that defines this uh, type of materials. We make modelizations, uh, optimization at this microscopic scales, okay, to come with uh, optimal material, okay, optimal material for a given application, okay, because since uh, in acoustics it depends on frequencies, it depends on thickness, it depends on the f shape. So each material okay, has to be configured differently depending on the end application. So and now let's start with my four words on the presentation from Planck to cosmic scales, from non-renewable to renewable resources. So, Planck scale, why I talk about Planck scale? Because when I started my, my research activities, it was only on phones, okay? And what is very, uh, the it phones is a natural process, okay? You find foam uh, when you drink beer, okay? When you're boiling water, okay? And uh, so foam is naturally, uh, it, it comes from nature, okay? It's minimized the in surface energy and then come foams. But what is interesting, is that foams is are everywhere. At Planck scale, Planck scale is, you see here, 10 minus 35 meter. This is the smallest lens, okay, of observation. Below the scale, we cannot theoretically make observation, okay? But nature does not like empty, okay? Though, so even below this, okay, there is something, and it is quantum effect. Okay, a uh, small, uh, uh, this, uh, d below this uh, Planck scale, we have some quantum effects, quantum fluctuations, okay? And what is fascinating about quantum fl fluctuation is that they, it is organized as foam, okay? The, si the, the, physician, the physicist call that quantum foam, and you see what it should look like. This is an imagination of a quantum foam, and it looks like a boiling water. Okay, so it appears, disappears, okay, the, the fluctuation, the quantum fluctuation appear, disappear, okay, and this is the form of a foam, okay, so we see foams at this very small scale, and then it follows a natural process, okay, even if it's a quantum effect, it's a natural process, come from nature. At cosmic scale, on the other side, okay, it means at the size of the universe, okay, the nature follows, again, fundamental laws, okay? And galaxy clusters are distributed in a foam-like structures, okay? You see again that this, uh, this is uh, 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 the, the cluster of galaxies in the universe, in the certain quadrant of the universe. And if you compare that to foam again, okay? Uh, here it's a uh, soap uh, sad texture. So you see that you find the same type of structures. So foam is everywhere, okay? 
Um, at the human scale, of course, okay, which is more interesting for us in terms of acoustic uh, application, we find also a foam a structure in the nature. So you see here some example, lufa, sea sponge, uh, honeycomb, snow, of course, it's uh, organized as a type of porous material, uh, cancellous bone, porous rocks, wool, sands, and uh, as SpongeBob can say, man will mimic nature to functionalize it for specific application. And for us, it's about okay, sound insulation. So from now non-renewable to renewable resources, why are we have to deal? You know, in all fa engineering, fa faculty of engineering, we talk, talk to the students now to think about the life cycle, cycle of a product, okay? For acoustic, for the uh, acoustician, it is about the same thing. We have to contribute to, contribute to that. And uh, we need to uh, be aware of uh, that in the past, we were uh, exclusively uh, using uh, non-renewable uh, materials and handicraft fabrication, okay? Here, this is a picture of uh, an old cathedral where we have the, the, the wall <coughs> covered by uh, holes, okay? It's kind of perforated walls, okay? And the walls, the neck that we see on the walls, open to an Elmos resonator, okay? So this is uh, the, 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 the way we were doing many thousand years ago, okay? And today, of course, we do the same, but it is uh, with non-renewable materials or difficult to recycle ma this type of material sometime. And uh, it is not handicraft, but industrial fabrication. <laughs> and this comes to the point that now, okay, from the past, here in this scale, this has come from the uh, HB uh, book on materials and the environment. You see that uh, 100,000 uh, year, before Christ, we were 100% uh, dependent on renewable resources. And at the industrial uh, revolution, we come from handicraft to uh, man-made fabrication, okay, industrial fabrication. And now, in the 2000 years, I think 2000 years after Christ, now we are nearly 100% de uh, person dependent on non-renewable material, okay? And the future for us is to come back, okay, uh, to a, a, to uh, a, a, a non-renewable, uh, to dip, uh, reduce our dependence to non-renewable uh, materials, okay. And an acoustic, as you see in the lots of papers, maybe if you look at the, in the acoustic journal, you don't see a lot uh, in papers on non-renewable material, uh, renewable material. But if you look in the textile research journal you will see uh, huge quantities of uh, papers that are on this type of natural fibers and recyclable materials, okay? Uh, because as we will see, uh, there is nothing to develop in terms of, uh, not, not a lot of term of science, it's more in terms of fabrication, how we can fabricate this type of material. And you will see in my presentation that uh, this is the same ways of modeling than conventional, than that we use for conventional materials. So what are these conventional materials? Okay, so you see that uh, mainly we talk about uh, uh, for acoustic purposes, it's some package, thermoacoustic packages that are used for reduction of noise. Uh, it's a combination of foam, fibers, granular, fabrics, felt, carpets, perforated plates, Previous, uh, pervious and impervious screens, okay? And also damping materials, plate and solid, because we will talk about multi-layer structures, okay, that are in combination of all this. But in this presentation, I will concentrate only on single layers, okay, homogeneous material on foam, fibers, granular, and so on, independently, no multi-layer structures, okay? And I will mostly ta um, focus on foam, fiber, granular, because all of these can be derived from this type of uh, basic structure, okay? So porous materials, okay? Uh, before optimizing porous material for acoustics, 
we need to understand what are the acoustic waves are dissipated in this type of materials. Okay, well, first, porous materials is composed of two phases, solid phase, what we call also the skeleton, and a fluid phase, okay? Both are mixed together in time and space, okay? They are coupled together, okay, through elastic and viscoelastic couplings. And what do they do is transform acoustic energy of the acoustic plane wa uh, uh, waves that propagates in the material into heat. And how this uh, operate? It operates through uh, viscous effects, thermal effects, structural damping effects, of course. I will concentrate more on the viscous and thermal effects in the material. And here you see some screenshot here, uh, uh, dynamics of what an acoustical wave that enter a porous material. This is the velocity wave. This is the, the acoustic temperature wave. This is the pressure wave amplitude. And you see that as it goes through the material, the amplitude reduces. Because here on the, the acoustic wave, the velocity wave, Okay, you will see that there is the snow slip condition that will drive uh, some energy uh, up from the uh, acoustic wave. And the temperature uh, wave here, you see that uh, at the wall, because the solid phase has a much more a larger in, a thermal inertia than the air, okay, it will impose no variation of temperature, of acoustical temperature, and then it will also remove some energy from the acoustic wave. So, this is the, the, the thing that we have to know before trying to optimize okay, the microstructure or the, mi the, 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 the acoustic properties of material. So how we can model this? Oh, well, before modeling this, okay, let's see about what are they exactly. Well, we can define them by their frame. Okay, we have elastic frame, like a polyurethane foam, rigid frame like uh, aluminum foam, limb frame like uh, wool, wool, limp wool, a uh, low density wool for instance. Uh, the, what about the microstructures? Then we have cellular, okay, like for foam, fiber material, granular material, and a 2D uh, picture of the cellular material here is the honeycomb. It's kind of uh, cellular but isolated cells. And we can have some polymeric foam, metal foam, natural mineral wools, uh, synthetic fibers, spells, recycled foam and fibers, shoddy that are very uh, used in the car industries, okay? Uh, carpet, also very well used in car industries. Perforated panels, perforated letters in the car for the, 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 the back of uh, the, 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 the driver's seat, for instance. Clothes. Woven fabrics, non-woven fabrics, and all these materials combined together can form multi-layers and laminates, okay, uh, that will have a functional uh, application for different uh, functionalized application, uh, so whether in aircraft, as like you see here, the liners, uh, perforated plate on honeycomb for uh, the uh, nacelle in an aircraft, or the carpet of a car, uh, which is a multi-layer. The top one is a uh, carpet, okay. And now, how uh, are they modeled? Of course, okay, we want to optimize them, so we have to know how we can, mo uh, we can model them, okay? And if we look at the, ma uh, at the macroscopic scale, when you take a foam, okay, well, usually at the human eyes, you will see something like it's quite homogeneous, even if at the low scale, it's not homogeneous. But at the scale of the, the eye, okay, of the observation by eyes, we see it's uh, um, uh, homogeneous, okay? And it is also homogeneous in terms of wavelengths, okay? If we have at low frequency, uh, let's say audio frequencies, so at this length well, uh, wavelength, uh, the wavelengths see the material as an homogeneous material combining two phases, the solid phase, an homogeneous solid phase, and homogeneous fluid phase, okay? Then when we respect this scale length, okay, between uh, the, the size of the cells and the wavelength, so we can uh, say that, well, we have uh, here two uh, homogeneous phases combined together, coupled together, and then comes some mathematics. Sorry for the maths, uh, but there is not a lot of maths on this presentation, but uh, just to give the big picture of how they are modeled, 
So for the fl in 3D here, for the solid phases, okay, uh, for the solid phase, we have what we call the elastodynamic equation that governs the motions, okay, of the solid phase. And for the fluid phase, we have the Helmholtz equation. This is the uh, wave equation in acoustics, okay, for uh, harmonic uh, excitation uh, that govern the, the pressure, the acoustic pressure in the material. And you see on the right, you have some coupling terms, okay, for the pressure wave, we have a coupling with the solid phase. And for the, the elastic uh, wave, we have a coupling with the pressure uh, in, uh, um, uh, wave. And th this is the, what we call the bioporoelastic equation that are used to model this type of poroelastic materials, okay? I will not uh, work with uh, bio in this presentation. I will limit, okay, on one limit of the poroelastic equation, when uh, the solid phase is motionless, okay? It means uh, what we call rigid frame uh, porous material. It doesn't mean that the frame is rigid in being motionless, in fact, but the motion of the frame is very low, okay? And it will uh, occur in two situations, okay? Uh, the first one is, uh, well, the first one is if the frame is actually very, very rigid, okay? And the other one, if uh, it will occur when the material will be excited by acoustical wave. Here I give a porous column here, this is the pressure wave. This is the elastic wave that propagates in the material. Uh, th this is uh, coupled together, in fact, okay? It is uh, excited by a mechanical excitation. And then you see here that the pressure, okay, wave goes, okay, from the top to the bottom, then is reflected and forms a given pattern, okay? And for the elastic wave, you see that uh, the motion, okay, there is a large displacement, okay? Of course, this is, Magnify, okay? I think I use a 200,000 uh, time magnification here to see something, okay? But you see that there is something that is moving on the solid phase, okay? Because it is mechanically excited. But if it is uh, acoustically excited, okay, uh, the, the coupling between the acoustical wave and the, 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 the large impedance of the, the, the solid phase make the solid phase uh, almost uh, motionless, okay? And I, re re I recall here that this magnification in 200,000 time. So this is the same I use, but when it is mechanically excited, you see the motion. When it is acoustically excited, it, there is no motion. So if we can consider that the frame is motionless, then the bioelastic equation say that the elastic P wave, uh, no, pop, not P wave, but uh, we have pressure, we have compression wave in fact, okay? is neglected, can be neglected, okay? And in this case, the elastodynamic equation is eliminated and we just stay with what we call the Helmholtz equation, okay? This is what we, it remains from the equation. So we have to solve the Helmholtz equation for rigid frame porous material. It's quite easy. It depends on two, uh, but different, two properties, in fact, okay? Uh, whether we use the, what we call the complex wave number or uh, characteristic impedance and uh, the dynamic density and dynamic bulk modulus. And these two proper these properties, okay, take into account all this uh, dissipation effect from viscous to thermal uh, dissipation of the acoustical waves. So these properties, okay, are the important properties. In fact, we need two properties to characterize the, the, the porous medium, okay, uh, the rigid frame porous medium, what we call the equivalent fluid density, the equivalent fluid dynamic uh, uh, bulk modulus. These two are predictable by analytical uh, models or based on intrinsic parameters, okay, and the other two uh, couple uh, set of parameters that can be used is the equivalent uh, characteristic impedance or, and complex wave number, okay? That can be predicted by models, but also measurable by a, a standard method using an impedance tube or transmission tube, okay? And when we know two of these properties, then all other properties of the material can be de derived, uh, li like uh, the, uh, the complex speed uh, uh, in the material, acoustic speed in the material, okay? 
uh, wave number, uh, characteristic impedance of the material. So, and let's uh, keep with these two properties, dynamic density and bulk modulus. Uh, they can be predictable by uh, intrinsic parameters of the, the foam, okay? And these characteristic parameters are notably for a given model, okay, five, okay? There is an open porosity, the tortuosity, viscous characteristic length, thermal characteristic length, and static airflow resistivity, or sometimes, okay, we talk about viscous permeability, which is about the inverse of this one. And these properties are very simple to uh, obtain, okay, uh, with uh, complicated equipments, okay. So we have the porosity, which is uh, just the, the, the uh, ratio of the fluid phase volume to the total volume. We have the resistivity, which is the pressure drop, okay, uh, for a given uh, velocity of the fluid, okay? Tortuosity is the tortuous path through the material, okay? So the an acoustical wave or particles will see that the path through the material is larger than the real sample, okay? And the square of this, this ratio is what we call tortuosity. Here is, I, uh, I make a mistake, <laughs> I just wrote, uh, Tortuosity is smaller or equal to one, but you just the inverse. It's uh, larger or equal to one, okay? And the characteristic lengths are something that are quite related to, for the viscous characteristic length, this one, it's quite related to the smallest uh, dimension of the, uh, the, 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 of the pores in the material. And the thermal characteristic lens is rela related to the larger pores in the material. So from this, okay, we can now, since we know how to model them from acoustical uh, parameters, uh, from uh, these uh, intrinsic parameters that can be measured in the lab with different type of equipments, now we want to understand how it, these properties, okay, uh, these properties that we have here uh, are linked to the microstructure, okay? Uh, this is what, uh, sometimes we call these intrinsic parameters the macroscopic parameters or the, uh, the, um, the transport properties, okay, uh, of the material. Our goal now is to characterize this link between the microstructure and the acoustic behavior or the, acu non, uh, the acoustic parameters. So let's take an example for foams. Here you have different type of foams, melamine foam, PE uh, polyurethane uh, poly foam, polyurethane foam, aluminum foam, and from where you are, probably you see them as homogeneous material. And it is, as I mentioned, the fact for acoustical waves, okay, in the audio frequency range. So if we look at their microstructure, they all resemble, okay, they are all foams, okay. Sometimes the, the struts, okay, in are very thin. Sometimes the struts, the ligaments are large. The size of the cells, may be large, may be smaller, and some cells may be closed by the window here. The window is not open. And in other case, the, all the windows are open, okay? So this is the observation that we can have made on a foam, okay? A cellular material here. Okay. Uh, the, the first thing is to characterize the microstructure, okay? Make microscopic analysis to define what we call a representative model, okay? of the microstructures. Here we use uh, optical uh, and um, electron microscope uh, scan, uh, tomography, microtomographic scan to understand what they are, the, uh, what, are what, what is the uh, representative uh, model for the cells. Uh, this was a work done by um, uh, <coughs> Camille Perrault at Sherbrooke uh, so, uh, uh, some time ago, t 10 years ago, probably uh, Camille is over there. <laughs> So um, from this, well, we derive a parametric model, okay? Here it's a periodic unit cell. It's a tetrachydecahedron cells, okay? Uh, that represent this me medium, okay? And if the cell is isotropic, okay? Only two parameters can be used to uh, characterize these cells, whether uh, the, 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 the cell diameter, okay? And the strut thickness, okay, or the strut thickness and the length of the uh, ligament, okay. And from this, 
And we can also add another parameters from uh, Olivier Dutt and uh, Atala Works, okay, which is the uh, uh, opening ratio okay, of the cell. So if it is fully uh, open like this one here, so all the windows are open, then we have a ratio of 100%, okay, opening ratio of 100%. If it is zero, it would be all closed cell, but it is not good for acoustic purposes because the acoustical wave cannot go through the material to dissipate, okay, uh, as I mentioned before, okay. So this is the model for a foam, a cellular material. If we talk about fiber materials, here the fibers, okay, so it's a uh, mineral wool, okay, uh, you, you, you see a glass wool in this, ca in this, ca in this case, you see that uh, there is, uh, it's quite homogeneous over the surface, but it is uh, not homogeneous in the thickness. Okay, you see some um, plan of uh, fabrication. Okay, in this case, we can define, uh, see with the microscopic uh, analysis, we can, uh, the top view here is quite random, the side view is quite organized in this case for this one. Okay, uh, so we will, here we will uh, limit our studies to called random, random fibers, okay, with transverse isotropy. And then we make the same procedure, look at the microscopic scale, make some analysis, okay, to determine what would be here a model for, a microscopic model for this one. Uh, contrary to the cellular material, where a periodic unit cell was possible to define, here we, were, we work with what we call a representative volume element, okay. This uh, volume element are some example of volume elements are given here. They are characterized by the open porosity, okay, the fiber effective diameters, okay, of, and the fiber orientation coefficient. In this coefficient the pre, uh, is an indication of the, the type of organization of the fibers, okay. If it's zero, it means it's a planar isotropy, okay. If it's a, a ratio of one third, okay, it means it's full isotropic, 3D isotropy, and if it's one, but you see that it is organized, okay, in the same directions. So this is for fibers. We have the same for granular, okay, same procedure. Okay, here we use a discrete element method to uh, simulate the, f the, 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 the uh, packing of uh, spheres, okay. We, d we have done this on many diameters of spheres, okay to come with a representative model, okay? Uh, and then uh, the size also of uh, this uh, representative volume element was determined, okay? The size, the minimal size is what we call uh, the, the minimum uh, uh, size for or considering the cell as homogeneous, okay? It's about three times the diameters, okay, of the, 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 of the, 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 the spheres, okay? And in this case, the representative model that you see here is, uh, can be characterized by the diameter of the uh, particles that are uh, for, uh, that forming the, the, the granular material, and also the void ratio, okay, uh, also called porosity, okay, and uh, the, the, it takes different values for compact uh, packaging, uh, packing, okay, you see it's the minimum of uh, porosity that we can have is 36, uh, 26%. If it's a closed packing like this one here, okay, this one, okay, is a loose packing. But when we apply some vibration or we compact here with a, a, a solid uh, uh, hammer, then the compaction uh, brings to 36% of porosity. Okay, so you have this type of uh, models for different structure, and then we go to the multi-scale model, okay? From the microstructure <coughs> to the macrostructure. So the objective here is to have this uh, methodology, okay, from micro, macro, to develop this micro, micro to macro relationship, okay, between microstructural parameters, defining whether the periodic cell or representative volumes, and transport properties, also known as the equivalent and transect microscopic properties, porosity, flow resistivity, and so on. Okay, and this procedure, we start with the microstructure parameters, okay, depending on the type of uh, cells or, or, or porous materials, okay, yes. and then we build this 
uh, we generate the representative element. We generate the fluid phase of the representative element because we are not interested in the solid phase. It's not a mechanical analysis that we are going to do here. It's a it's a um, uh, acoustic propagation in the fluid phase. So we make the inverse of it. So we have the fluid phase here. We make uh, we saw that this uh, local scale the uh, the uh, transport equations okay that governs the. The, the, the porosity, flow resistivity, and so on of the material. Okay, we post-process the result to find these uh, intrinsic parameters, and then we do that for another uh, set of microstructure parameters. And finally, from all this analysis, we derive these micro, my, uh, micro relationships, okay? Then, when we have this, okay, uh, well, first, the equation to be solved. Just a screen, uh, uh, a big, uh, a quick view of this equation. I will pass very quickly on this. So just to see that there's some maths behind, okay? But, uh, but all these uh, equations, okay, once they are solved at the local scale, yield the intrinsic parameters. Well, finally, okay, we can have from these intrinsic parameters, we feed the acoustic models, okay, uh, for the, de the equivalent density and bulk modulus, okay, that are used in this equation to derive the sound absorption coefficient in normal incidence, the transmission loss in normal incidence, okay. So when we talk about the, the absorption problem, it's the material of thickness D is uh, backed by a rigid wall. So we want to characterize the absorption of the incident wave Okay, to minimize a reflected wave. And for the transmission loss problem, well, we want to minimize, okay, the, we want to reduce the acoustic uh, amplitude of the transmitted wave. A demo of, so I, I try to summarize all this, okay, in a, program, okay, and uh, this is why I use this computer here. It's to show you an example, okay. This is uh, an application that gives the abs sound absorption coefficient. All of these are in normal incident as it would be measured in impedance tube, okay. So this is the absorption, okay. It's not given in percentage, okay, just uh, uh, dimensional from zero to one, zero being no absorption at all, the reflected wave is equal to the incident wave, and one is perfect absorption, okay? And transmission loss here from zero to 50 dBs, okay? And in uh, the X scale is the frequency. So we go from zero to 6,000 Hertz. Here is for the granular model, okay? Ra random packing of spheres. Uh, here uh, we have the thickness, the particle diameters, and the void ratio. And let's play with uh, some of these properties. You see first, th the first thing that we see uh, is that this uh, material is uh, show a tunnel behavior, okay? Why it is a tunnel behavior? It is because the porosity is small, okay? When the porosity is very low, okay, the material will show tunnel behavior, okay? If you take a perforated plate, okay, on a honeycomb layer, you will see tunnel behavior. Okay, if you want to minimize the tunnel behavior, you have to increase the, the uh, void ratio or the porosity. But in this case, the void ratio only goes from 26% to 42% from uh, perfect packing of spheres to the loose packing of sphere, okay? So it does not change a lot for the, uh, the, uh, the granular uh, packing. Uh, for the particle diameter, okay, of course, if I enlarge the particle diameter, okay, the, the void will be larger between space. It will remain with the same uh, uh, percentage of um, uh, open porosity, but the space between uh, the, the spheres are larger. So it will reduce, here you will see the flow resistivity, okay, uh, zero will be air, full air, okay as an increase, okay, to infinity. Infinity would be a, a full solid, okay? You will see that when I, I increase this, I will reduce the, the resistivity. And you will see that, okay, 
the transmission loss reduces and the absorption, the peak remains at the same frequency. It does not change the frequencies of absorption. It just changes the level. And you will see that if I go to very large particle, here it's uh, uh, nearly 50 mi millimeter diameter. If I go to 0.5, okay, you will see that, oh, now I reach some limits, okay? You see that I reach a limit that it cannot overpass. And also what is interesting is that the frequency, okay, the, the size of the diameter can find the size of the diameter that give a maximum at the first peak of absorption. When I reduce too late, okay, I just pass the optimum. When I increase, then too late, I pass over the maximum. So there is some optimal values, okay, or set of parameters that I can find for a given thickness. If I change the thickness here, you will see for this, uh, this one where I have a maximum here. So I reduce the thickness. You will see that uh, the first peak now moves. Okay, all the peaks moves in frequencies. If I enlarge the thickness, then I find a maximum and then I will start to reduce again. There is an optimal thickness for a given particle diameter, okay? This is the typical behavior of a granular material, okay? Uh, what you can see is that I start always at zero, okay? This is a physical limit for, uh, uh, based on the, um, the, the physics of the dissipation. For the transmission, what is interesting, okay, well, I, I, is that the, the, the same behavior be, be, be appears, okay, in terms of tonal behavior, okay? But you see, since the resistivity is very low, the sound transmission is very low also. If I go to fibrous material, <coughs> this is uh, the, uh, a, a good configuration, okay, where the thickness, the fiber diameter yield almost a very uh, good absorption, okay? You see here the transmission loss. And then if I, I change, let's say, the fiber diameter, okay, you will see that oh, now the absorption reduces, but the transmission increases because the resistivity goes uh, larger, okay? And if I play with the, poros the porosity here, you will see that there is an effect, okay? If I reduce the porosity, Okay, it's changed the flow resistivity. If I reduce it, the flow resistivity increases. If I, I, I use a larger porosity, the flow resistivity reduces. And again, uh, we will see that there exists also uh, an optimal value for a given set of parameters, okay? Let's say if I select, uh, for instance, here, this one. It goes there. You see that I increase then I can start obtain a maximum. Then if I go higher fibers, I will see then uh, 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 going down, okay? And all depends on the thickness also, this uh, optimal value. And one thing which is very interesting to observe is that if I increase, uh, let's say I will use uh, small fibers, okay? And then I play with the thickness. You see the thickness does not change the absorption. So if you use a high density uh, min mineral wool, okay, and then you use a uh, five inch, six inches, well, uh, you can use only some millimeter, 40 millimeters instead of 200 millimeters, okay? And starting at 40 millimeters, the behavior of the acoustic absorption does not change anymore. So you can use larger thickness, but uh, you're just losing money, okay? if it's absorption that you are dealing with. But for the sound transmission, you see that the uh, absorption, uh, the sound transmission will increase with the thickness, okay? So I can keep this thickness here, use a fiber here, okay? And let's say I use a, a 25 here, okay? I move with the thickness. Let, let's look at the transmission loss. You see there is kind of an inch at zero hertz, okay? So it seems that this is fixed for a given set of parameters, okay? And this value uh, will change in frequency 
um, at higher frequency, but at low frequency, it's kind of an inch. Okay, it, it just moves just around this one here. Okay, and we will understand that later on. Okay, but just observe this for now. And for foam, it's about the same. Oh yes, for for uh, fibrous material. Um, uh, well, there the one. Yeah, okay, that's it. Okay. Uh, for foams, okay, uh, we play with the thickness of the material, the cell diameter, and the strut thickness, okay? And here, the set of parameters that you see here is uh, very close to uh, melamine foam, okay? And if we play with the thickness, we will see that the absorption will increase, then we'll start to decrease to reach, again, an asymptotic absorption, okay? So there is a limit of absorption for a given material. Transmission loss, you see the hinge effect also at low frequency. Okay, if I play with the resistivity, you will see that, okay? Um, and then uh, you see that uh, what the major point here is, have, uh, uh, for instance, if I use a smaller cells, it means very higher flow resistivity, okay? That the limit of uh, absorption, okay, uh, is uh, very reduced in terms of thickness. Okay, so I use 80 millimeter of thickness here, okay, or 40 millimeters, it's about the same, but twice uh, the thickness loss in terms of cost, okay. So this is uh, how the, 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 their property, aquatic properties are governed by the micro uh, structure properties, okay. So we now we know we, we can optimize them because we have a relation to optimize the material for a given application. Um, whether we want a, a large uh, absorption uh, absorber, a, a wide, uh, rain, a wide band absorber, or we want a tunnel absorber. So we know that we have to uh, use different type of material. So if I go back to the presentation, some conclusion on this. We know that the tonal behavior, okay, for low porosity materials, so we see that this is a tonal behavior if we, lose, uh, we use low porosity. Sun absorption starts always at zero, okay? We have a, a peak of absorption, okay, uh, that depends on the, the uh, flow resistivity, so there is an optimal uh, flow resistivity, okay? If it's too high, uh, it's no good. If it's too low, it's no good. So there is an optimum. And we see, I've observed this asymptotic absorption limit for a given uh, thickness, okay? And for transmission, well, it starts not at zero dB, okay? If uh, the frame is rigid, okay, at least. And uh, it's rather low anyway, okay? And the uh, transmission will increase with static airflow resistivity, with frequency and thickness. And the fact that we see the hinge effect in sound transmission, okay? If we look at the equations and we take the low frequency uh, pr the, uh, limit, we see that the transmission loss, okay, is only given at zero hertz, okay, by the flow resistivity and the thickness, okay? Uh, this is the, the, the flow resistance of the material, which is sigma d, okay? And since it is given by that, but well, of course, we can derive also the flow resistivity from the transmission uh, curve, okay? So this is, uh, for uh, solid layers, okay, a wall, uh, we're talking about the mass law that governs the transmission loss. For porous material, well, this is the sigma law, okay, that uh, drives the acoustic behavior, okay? It tells you at which uh, level of transmission it will stop at zero hertz. Now, let's look, uh, have a look at the first peak and absorption, uh, uh, abs synthetic absorption. So the first peak, okay, is related to the quarter wavelength of the material, okay? The, so when the, the, the wavelength is equal to, uh, uh, the, 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 the quarter of the wavelength is equal to the thickness of the material, we'll see a peak appear, okay? So if you change the thickness, the peak will shift, okay, for another water, a quarter wavelength, okay? And, uh, if we normalize the axis, the x-axis, not in terms of frequency, but in terms of adimensional parameters that is given by the complex, uh, the, uh, the, let's say the, uh, the uh, wave number uh, times the thickness, okay? Then you see that all these curves that are presented on the present, uh, present fly, uh, slide, okay, uh, seems the same curve, okay? The peaks always appear at the same frequency. 
And for low resistivity material, it happens around uh, key G equal to P pi sur, uh, over 2. Okay? So we have a value for this. But in fact, okay, this maximum for larger resistivity will occur when the mean quadratic velocity that governs the, uh, dissi the viscous dissipation in the material is maximum. And this is uh, nearly the quarter wavelength. This is the quarter wavelength of the material. The, the, the yellow uh, is the thickness of the material on that increase. And you see this is the quarter wavelength here. And for higher resistivity material, you see that the maximum will appear just a little bit higher than the quarter wavelength. So we have to know that because if we want to 100% absorption at a given frequency, we have to know exactly where it occurs. OK? For the asymptotic absorption, OK, we have uh, this limit that when the incident wave goes in the material, it attenuates. And sometime at, su at a given distance, OK, the, the, the waves are, the, uh, are most vanished, OK? So when it hit the wall at the end, it, uh, there is almost no more reflection, OK? I remind here the absorption uh, expression, OK? At the limit, okay, the asymptotic limit is given by this equation here, okay, and it means that if this limit is is a uh, reach, it means that the cotangent here yields uh, tends to one, okay. If I not using here the uh, this complex density, but I use the surface impedance and the characteristic impedance of the material, here are the equations, the same equation expressed with different uh, properties. Okay, it means that the cotangents of, a, yeah, yeah, oh, let's forget the omega here, key D tends to one, okay? And from this, we can uh, find what is the, uh, uh, what we call the critical death or penetration death on the acoustical waves in the material, which is given by this equation here, okay? And at this, at this penetration death, if I use the thickness of this thickness, the transmission loss will be 26 uh, dBs. So as a conclusion for this, okay, we know that absorption uh, is low at low frequency, start at zero, in fact. We have an optimal peak absorption near quarter wavelength. We have a critical thickness, okay, which is determined by the type of material uh, characterized by its uh, complex wave number. Okay? And uh, we know all about absorption now on material. We have the optimal value and the asymptotic value. We start with, uh, uh, remains no more, no, uh, five minutes about, okay? So uh, rapidly, non-conventional porous material, okay? Just to quickly show that these are similar to conventional materials. Here we talk about uh, f material that are uh, based for sustainable um, uh, development, okay, and also structure by main materials. This is the two non-conventional materials I will uh, just uh, give an overview here, okay. When we talk about sustainable materials, here are some examples of sustainable materials, okay. Uh, we see that are from uh, natural fibers, okay, uh, um, uh, animal uh, fibers, okay, or mineral uh, material, okay? Like glass wool, rock wool, basalt, which are, uh, and peels hair that are, comes from volcanic rocks, okay? Here, okay, those that are mentioned here with this type of uh, shape, okay, are those that are locally available, okay? And when we talk about sustainable developments, we need to be sure that, uh, well, for a given application, we, 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 we use materials that are close to the transformation uh, plan, okay? So for us, instead, for instance, if I work here, I, I, I'm, uh, I try to make new materials in Quebec using uh, sustainable developments, okay? So I should use these one. If I'm in China, I think I can use all of these, <laughs> okay? But in Quebec, okay, in Canada, these are the ones that we can use, okay? This is something that we have to take into account. Uh, we can use also recyclable uh, material, post-industrial and post-consumer waste, okay? Um, uh, that that po po poly polypropylene, post-industrial, uh, shoddy materials that comes from uh, 
uh, uh, recycled phones that are very largely used in car industry now, okay? Uh, from a wine a bottle, okay, we can make some uh, blown glass granules to make a granular material, or we can use flash ashes, fly ashes, okay, uh, from biomass, from pulp and pepper industries, okay, uh, that are um, uh, waste that can be used to produce also granular material. And about the property, okay, of these green or greener materials, uh, when they, they are, they are uh, transformed for materials, acoustic materials, well, they become new foams, new fibrous material granular. So it means that it can be modeled as conventional materials. We know how to model them, okay, we know how to optimize them, okay? Uh, but the challenge for us, okay, is to uh, make the link between the, the microstructure and the fabrication process. So here an example, so, so, well, I give some examples here, but I just put a lot of examples, I have more time, but you see that we can use, for instance, you, a recycled carpet to make uh, optimization of this carpet, find the, uh, optimal parameters for a given application. It tells you, well, you need 139 millimeter with density of 66 kilogram per cubic meter. And then if you fabricate this type of sample, you test in tube, okay, you compare with simulation, then you see that you reach a target of the optimal uh, material. So use of switch grass to make a uh, acoustic wall, a uh, use of milkweed to isolate uh, an ambulance, okay, make a thermoacoustic package, fly ashes or uh, brown granules that are used to make uh, some uh, tonal absorber for uh, electrical plant. And finally, to conclude, okay, structure acoustic materials, okay, we call about, um, uh, well, we use structured acoustic material to calculate, because we calculate design their shapes for a given acoustic target. We optimize the microstructure for a given design, okay? Let's talk about the wedges that we can foam, okay? But if we structure correctly the foam by calculation as done by uh, Bonfiglio and Pompoli, we can have a maximum, of an optimal configuration for a wedge stru structure. So we have 99% starting at 100 hertz with 70 millimeter with a uh, foam again, or fibrous material here, if I, uh, it's a uh, glass wool, we can uh, use a double porosity, where we just perforate holes in the material, and then if you use a 150 millimeter thick layer, you see you reach the, the asymptotic behavior, but you can improve, okay, uh, even with this thickness, go higher the asymptotic behavior, if you dry, uh, drill hole correctly in the material, okay? And here you can reach, okay, a maximum of 99%, nearly 100% at 220 uh, hertz, okay? However, you, you, you see that it's more tonal, okay? You can have a peak because, again, the double porosity is low, okay? So it makes a tonal absorber. If you want to have a wide band absorber, we can use a decreasing profile, okay, and then with decreasing profiles or some optimization, okay, you can reach a 99% absorption at 100 hertz, starting uh, for a minimal thickness of 60, 60 millimeter. That is very low. That, that for, for now, it's unbeatable, okay? And then this is done with melamine foam here. So you see the, the, the pink curve is the asymptotic behavior but when you drill hole correctly, the uh, decreasing profile, you can maximize, okay, on a wide bench, the sound absorption. So if you know, we want to know more about this, there is a uh, Kevin Verzier uh, that will present something on this on Wednesday. And metamaterial, go beyond, okay, meta for beyond, okay, metamaterial for beyond conventional materials, that are man-made, structured by man, okay, that are typically based on acoustic resonance, elastic resonance, interferences when we use phonic crystal, okay. Well, there is a session in the Congress, okay, 
uh, that uh, is dedicated to this. So this is the session uh, 03, 808 SS03. Okay, so I think that those interested for material material can go in this session. You will see a lot of uh, much more uh, interesting work than the one I, present, I will present here rapidly. Uh, we can have uh, low frequency multi tunnel sound absorber using periodic neck cavity system that are optimized. Okay. Uh, to a uh, given frequency, they can create sound absorption uh, for a given volume. It, the sound absorption will be much better than a classical and most resonator. Here, this is the classical and most resonator. You use the periodic one, you will see the, the red curve. If you optimize the neck of the almost resonator, you can have the same peak at the same first frequency, but the, 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 the periodic one will present other peaks that absorb. Uh, quite uh, uh, importantly, the sound the, the material, okay, and some uh, use of uh, phon phonic crystal to reduce the the noise coming out from a hood, a kitchen hood, okay. So we want to let the airflow go into the kitchen hood, but we want uh, do we do not want the noise coming out, okay. So there is kind of a non reciprocity. But we can uh, overpass this problem with a cr sonic crystal. Okay, you can. I don't know if the sound will work here, but uh, rapidly. This is my last one. Oh yeah. It seems not working. But anyway, it was a gain of two sounds. Okay, that is used uh, by this, and it's uh, quite. Uh, and uh, we we hear this difference between uh, these two. Well, that's about it. Thanks for all uh, for uh, your presence here, and enjoy the rest of the Congress. Thank you very much.